Greetings, vinyl community, and welcome to number 200. Uh, this is my 200th vinyl-related video, uh, and I would not have known that if it wasn't for the fact that I had an incredible bout of boredom the other day, and the fact that I was responding to a comment on a really old video, so I had to scroll back through my videos to see what they were referring to. And uh, I decided to count back, and it is indeed number 200. So uh, not that 200 is a great milestone, but where is the time gone? It, it just seems like yesterday I started doing this. But uh, what this does allow me to do is say thank you to anyone or everyone who's been watching my channel. Uh, anyone who has subscribed, left a comment, good for bad. And one of the great things about this YouTube world that we live in, and I'm shaking my hand for no reason. Uh, one, of the, one of the great things about doing this is I've got to know a lot of great people uh, since I started doing this. Uh, who, I, who I converse with outside of this YouTube world that, uh, like I said, that we live in. Uh, and that's that's the great upside uh, of doing this. So I want to say thank you to everyone. And for the 200th time, cheers, everyone. I thought we'd celebrate number 200 by doing a 200-minute long video. Or just probably will see it that way. But, uh, yeah, thank you to everyone. I really do appreciate that. And you have to um, excuse me as well. Uh, it's very early in the morning. I just got off work, a very long overnight shift. And this is the only time I have to um, film a video for the next little while. So this is what it is. This is what you get. Uh, what we got in this video is we have some new vinyl. We have an incredible punk haul. Uh, and it's just kind of coincidence that I have a, a really great punk haul um, to tie in with number 200 and uh, thrift store finds as always but what we're going to start with today is uh, some non-vinyl finds not a whole lot but I thought uh, the resurgence in cassettes would have died by now I absolutely understand the resurgence of vinyl about 12 years ago or so but uh, cassettes they seem to the bands are still releasing cassettes uh, there are new albums on cassettes, and, and there's a lot of cassettes that are, are premium priced now if you want to use record stores, which is really weird to say uh, or say or see. But uh, what I got, I mean, honestly, uh, at thrift stores, cassettes are cheap as chips, so I pick them up. And you know what? They're the format of my youth, maybe the format of, of your youth as well. So um, maybe there's some nostalgia involved there. But the specials first album which I used to have in high school. This is not this very copy, because that would be kind of odd, but the uh, exact same looking cassette copy. I played this damn thing out in high school, but uh, love this album, the first specials album. Uh, two Peter Gabriels, I got So, and what I would consider his best album is Us. Uh, great Canadian metal band called Harem Scarum, uh, album called Mood Swings. Uh, if you're into metal, you, uh, they had a song called No Justice off this album that did fairly well, I guess, all over the world. So, Harem Scarum, uh, and one of my favorite albums of all time. I've never, I don't think I've ever owned this on cassette, but I have a copy of Split Ends, True Colors. There you go. That's it. See? It was painless. The non-vinyl finds were painless today. Uh, I will forewarn you, though, that I will be drinking a lot of coffee, so I stay awake and I don't nod off during this video. Because once again, that also would be kind of weird. So cheers, everyone. Um, you know what? Let's just get right to this. Let's get to do some new vinyl. Uh, this first one yeah, that I'm going to pick up here, uh, if I pick this one, if I pick the correct one up, um, and I did, uh, is a record store day title from last record store day that uh, started kind of trickling in late to stores here in Canada. And uh, you guys all know I'm a big uh, T-Rex fan. This is uh, T-Rex Bump and Grind. And there's two record labels out of the UK. I believe they're out of the UK. One is Demon and one is uh, Easy Action. And they release a lot of T-Rex material every year on vinyl. A lot of it of dubious quality. And I was uh, caught in a rabbit hole of buying everything. And I've had to stop that because a lot of it's kind of junk. Um, and I just got myself wasting money on really, really bad live albums and demos. Uh, albums of demos and stuff like that. But this one is actually quite good, and I do recommend this one. This one is um, 
kind of working versions, uh, alternate takes in the studios, etc. Uh, in the studio, etc., etc. It's called Bump and Grind T-Rex. Really, uh, a really good one if you're looking to get something like that. Which I don't know why you would, but I do. Uh, next one is uh, pro I'll just show it to you. Propagandi, failed states. Uh, Propagandi is a band from Winnipeg, Canada, but they are kind of world known. Uh, uh, they get hung with that punk tag, punk tag, because that's what they were uh, kind of back in the early 90s. That's how they started. But since then, they've morphed into really, really great progressive. I hate, if you could combine these three things together, this is what they are. Progressive punk metal. If that makes sense and it probably doesn't but uh they've been around for i don't know how long since the early 90s um but it's just their last three albums they've released have been their best of their career their new one's called victory lap but this is the one before that one called failed states and i think it's their best album they've done and before that was one called supporting cast you can't lose on on any of those ones but this is my particular favorite one is uh, Failed States by Propagandi. They're more known for their political commentary in their, uh, in their songs. And that's what people look to them for uh, or respect them for. That's kind of a secondary thing for me. Once I, you know, if I like the song, I like the song, then the lyrics might click with me. But uh, yeah, and I'm blabbing on too much about Propagandi. But I love this band. Propagandi, Failed States. All right, uh, a band that maybe three of you might know, two of you might know, but there was a musical movement in the mid-90s, uh, going into the mid-2000s, um, called EBM. And I think the term is still kicking around under a different guise. But back then, it was EBM was kind of cod industrial. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use bunny ears again, cod industrial. Uh, a lot of people called it industrial or EBM. But that, that scene was big in Europe, Germany, Europe, all over Europe, and it was big in my city and Montreal. And when I was booking for this club, we would, uh, it was a rather large club, but we would fly these bands in. They would sell out shows here, uh, and then maybe go down west and play San Francisco, Los Angeles. Um, and they would play Montreal and then play huge shows in Europe. But it was really weird that my city kind of grabbed onto this kind of music with Apop Take My Berserk and Covenant and bands like, like that that you also probably haven't heard of. But this is a band called VNV Nation and I think maybe the best of that group of bands, uh, possibly. Uh, this is their album called Empires, uh, which I also think is their best album. They, they did a limited run on vinyl. I was happy to get a copy. Uh, I've had the pleasure of booking them three or four times. Uh, really nice guys, but uh, really great album. Happy to have this on vinyl. V and V Nation Empires, and you're going to notice this is going to jump all over the place from T Rex to punk. Well, I hate to call them punk. When people call propaganda punk, I really cringe because they're they've come so far. So, uh, anyways, uh, T Rex, propaganda, V and V Nation, and, and coffee. Uh, next up is. What is next up? Oh my God, it's Venom. Venom, the single's 80 to 85. Um, Venom, when I was a kid, uh, was the scariest band on earth. And a lot of people thought that. They were the first of their kind to, um, to not infer satanic messages. They were, they were out there just saying it. Yes, we are satanic. Uh, and it's, it, it, with the benefit of hindsight, it's difficult to look back on Venom with fresh eyes and not chuckle a little bit. But I still have great memories of Venom. I still have a, a large store credit, so I'm picking up some of these new records, uh, just kind of trading in a lot of CDs. I don't need getting vinyl. This is one of them. Double vinyl of... Uh, and you know, the odd thing is, is like the T-Rex material. Whoever owns the catalog for Venom, they find different excuses every year to reissue the records at least twice a year. Um, it's kind of silly at this point, but I decided to pick up this one. I have their other records, uh, their full-length records, but I thought this was a nice, tight, double vinyl collection of their singles. Uh, Venom. Ooh, okay, yeah, speaking of uh, the store credit, uh, I decided, well, I did decide to uh, pick up some of the Black Sabbath remasters 
uh, that are out floating around. And uh, although obviously I have the original presses of all their records, excuse me, I've heard very good things about the vinyl uh, remasters that they've been putting out. And I thought I would, I would buy them and put them to the test. And I think this is case in point, and I've talked about this before, that original pressings of albums are cool to own. We'll get that out of the way. They're cool to have. Um, are they the best sounding quality? Um, no, not always. Sometimes they are. A lot of times they're not. And I think these Black Sabbath um, ones they've been bringing out, although I haven't heard the first album, uh, the remastered um, first album, and I haven't heard Paranoid, uh, I will say these ones are much better than the original copies that I, that I own. But I got a copy of Sabotage, one of their finest albums in my opinion, and Masters of Reality. Nothing more I could talk about ven or Venom. No, nothing more. I, I mean, by the way, because I'm so tired, I just got off work. You're going to get all the uh, pimples and warts and mumbles and stumbles that comes with me being so tired. We're not talking about Venom. We're talking about Black Sabbath. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm really, really impressed with these new these new remasters. Um, there you go. Okay, let's get to this punk call uh, that I referred to already. I'm just going to scoop them up here. I had an incredible haul of uh, punk vinyl. That uh, something I've, I don't think I've ever had uh, quite a haul like this ever in my life. But uh, I got an original pressing of the Ramones' Adios Amigos. Uh, never seen this on vinyl. It's one of two Ramones albums that I'm missing. Uh, generally speaking, people are, when they're missing Ramones albums, it's the later material like this. This is an original U.S. pressing, and uh, this is their final album, and it's not their best album, but side two of this album is actually very, very, very good. Um, what had happened, uh, long story, or short story long, probably, is uh, they released their album Mondo Bizarro, um, and out al the album before this one, to all the, the, the studio album before this one because they had a covers album in between. And they were convinced, if you watch their documentary, End of the Century, they talk about this, but they uh, they were convinced that Mondo Bazaar was going to be the album that was going to break them finally after decades. Um, it was at, they, were, re, they released it at the height of grunge and every band uh, in that scene was talking about the Ramones and the media and the press and Nirvana and Soundgarden and Alice in Chains and... And all those bands were name-checking the Ramones, and they released this album, Mondo Bizarro, that they were convinced was going to finally break them. And then it did nothing, or very little. And it deflated them to the point where uh, they decided to call it a day, but they had two albums left on their contract. So they did a covers album called Acid Eaters, which is eh, which is the only other one I'm missing. And then they did their final album, Adios Amigos, which gave them an excuse to go out and tour. And it, it kind of sounds like a contractual obligation kind of going out with a whimper instead of a bang in my opinion but side two is i think is quite good actually with one of the most underrated ramon songs ever called she talks to rainbows but anyways ramon's adios amigos uh one of the best punk finds i've had in forever uh bad religion how could hell be any worse an original epitaph records pressing from 1981 is it once again this album has never really gone out of print, but uh, an original pressing. Uh, and I will preface this by saying, punk vinyl, generally speaking, whether you have represses or original copies, they weren't ever re really recorded very well, so whether you have an original or a new press is kind of irrelevant, really. But uh, Bad Religion, how could hell be any worse? X, one of my favorite punk bands out of L.A., live at the Whiskey A Go Go double album, um, has my favorite song by them called Johnny Hit and Run Pauline. But great double album uh, live at the uh, Whiskey A Go Go famous LA venue. Oh man, this is this is a really cool one. The Cramps Stay Sick, an original pressing on Enigma Records. It was 1990. Uh, this has the song The Creature from the Black Leather Lagoon, which was actually quite a big video hit here in Canada. Our video station played the shit out of it. Uh, but this is, I'll show you. There you go. Um, 
and I guess the sticker tells you that it's an, it's an original pressing, and I'm dropping the switch cover for it. Um, I think, obviously, early cramps is kind of classic material, but I think this is probably one of their better, or kind of later albums, is Stay Sick. Forgotten Rebels, Serpent on Heroin, original pressing on Restless Records. Uh, Forgotten Rebels, one of the best punk bands to ever come out of Canada. They were from Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, this is from 1982, I believe. Uh, and their song Serpent on Heroin is kind of their kind of classic song. But uh, one of the great punk bands to ever come out of Canada, Forgotten Rebels, Serpent on Heroin. I'm trying to be brief today. I'm trying, to make, I'm trying not to make this video 200 minutes, but... We might get there. Um, JFA. We're still with the punk stuff, by the way. JFA. They were really big uh, in my... I think they were from Arizona, but they might have migrated to California at some point. They were really big with my group of friends in high school. Um, we were skateboarding little shit rats, um, listening to a lot of skate punk, like Suicidal Tendencies, SNFU... Uh, there were a few other bands kind of thrown into there, but JFA was one of those bands. This is an original pressing of Valley of the Yakes, their first album, full album. They had an EP before this. I've never actually seen one of their records on vinyl before. I have uh, CD compilations by JFA. And I could be wrong. I've never Googled this, but we always thought that JFA sat, stood for Jody's Foster, uh, Jody Foster's Army. Could be true. Might not be true. Um, I like to think it's true, but, uh, yeah, they were, as you can tell, they, they're holding skateboards, but they were kind of part of that skateboard, uh, Thrasher magazine kind of, uh, um, group, I guess, but, uh, very happy to have that on vinyl. Uh, this is part of the same haul, but it's not really punk, and I showed you a copy of this, uh, not that long ago, a few months ago, but it was kind of a newer pressing, I, I thought it was, I can't remember now, but it was a single vinyl pressing. But I got an original UK double vinyl pressing of Lard, The Last Temptation of Reed. And what's cool about the original UK presses is that it came with a bonus album. So this is a double record. Uh, Lard, I've talked about them before and I'll talk about them again really, really quickly. There's a... Uh, Lard is Ministry, ostensibly it's Ministry with Jello Biafra from Dead Kennedys on vocals. And uh, actually they had a song off this album on the Natural Burn Killer soundtrack. I think they had Pineapple Face was on that soundtrack. But uh, I would put this album, I think this album is better than a lot of Ministry albums and better than a lot of Dead Kennedys albums. Not all, but some. Uh, some of the most intense music you'll ever hear is Lard. But Last Temptation of Reed I think is their greatest album they did. And they haven't done an album forever. In fact, uh, do I have time for a short story? I booked uh, Jello Biafra uh, to play with his uh, Guantanamo Bay band uh, at the club I was booking at uh, years ago. And it was my job to drive him around to record stores because that, that's what bookers do. And uh, I was warned by his manager that he pulled me aside before I started dry, uh, you know, driving him around for the day. Well, I had to pick him up at his hotel. He was kind of uh, a bit not pleased with me that I parked, you know, a block away from the hotel. Sorry, Jello, you had to walk. But uh, <clears throat> so I was, my job was to take him record, sh uh, record store shopping. And uh, but his manager before that, I was, uh, at the venue, before I picked him up, he warned me. He said, "Listen, Jello gets told he's God every day." by many people and he's been told that for 20 30 years so he's kind of affected uh so just be forewarned when you talk to him he he, he talks coming from that perspective of people tell him he's god all the time so i pick him up and he, i don't know if anyone's had an opportunity to talk to people who I've been told this their whole life, or for the vast majority of their life, but we had some very weird conversation. And then he found out that I have a really big Canadian punk collection, and he wanted to come to my house to buy it. And I said, no, you cannot buy it, Jello. But uh, I was talking to him about lard. I thought I would not call him God and treat him just normal as anyone else would or should. And uh, I got on the topic of lard, and... Uh, he he really really wants to do more lard albums but 
I think it's Jello. I think it's the uh, Al Jorgensen from Ministry kind of holding it back. But uh, that's just a that's that re that's really a, a total very big aside, isn't it? But uh, in the end, it was actually kind of fun driving him around. I had just kind of had to skirt around talking about dead Kennedys and and his career. Just talked about normal shit, like like I said, everyone should do with these people. Whew. There you go. I threw in a story for free. Not that I charge you for anything, anyways. But large last temptation of Reed. I gotta tell some of these stories on video, or I'll once I get, get Alzheimer's, I'm gonna forget them all. Uh, Thrift Store Finds, The Who, Who's Next, but not any copy of Who's Next. A really, really nice copy of Who's Next. This is the Master File series, Mastered at Half Speed, which I think does make a, a huge difference. Uh, not the rarest of the, who's out, uh, the, the Who album. A lot of people have the, the uh, Master File version, but a very, very good sounding version of Who's Next. Maybe the second or third time I've ever... Or, Maybe the second time I've ever found a Rush album at thrift stores, but I found a copy of Grace Under Pressure. Um, to me, their most underrated album, um, and I'm kind of biased as this was the first Rush album I ever owned. But it has Red Sector A and Enemy Within, and uh, um, what else is Oh, uh, Distant Early Warning, of course. Um, and uh, if, if you're a Rush, if you're a Rush fan or, or kind of wanting to get into Rush, why wouldn't you? Uh, Try Grace Under Pressure. It's one of their most underrated albums, in my opinion. It's it's before the keyboards got too, too heavy, but there's keyboards prominent in, in this album. But it doesn't affect the overall quality of the album, in my opinion. Grace Under Pressure by Rush. Uh, really, really great album. Uh, picked it up just because it was a buck 99, and I just it, I took a punt on it because it's on Blue Note. One of the, the worst Blue Note label design ever, but well, I don't know why they ever switched it. But this is a copy of Bobby Humphrey's Satin Doll. And Bobby Humphreys is a lady who plays the flute. And I'm getting a bad glare there. I apologize. I'll try to get my head. The sun's coming up, as you can tell. Um, she play, she's a flautist, if that's the right term. Uh, but So it's jazz, but with jazz flute, I guess. Uh, but with insanely great funk underneath it all and I was really taken aback by how, how great this music is and then I kind of listened to a few other other albums online um, really taken aback by how good good this is Bobby Humphreys it appears to be a cutout copy too with the cut corner but that's not here nor there because I don't play the cover remember that Bobby Humphreys Satin Doll really actually really great find one of those really happy accidents happy surprises Miles Davis Live Evil um, double album. Uh, he, he has a lot of live material out there, but I will uh, venture, uh, not a guess, but an opinion that this is maybe his best live. It's kind of, Live Evil is kind of a, an edited kind of album together with some studio stuff into live stuff. It's kind of a weird thing. You'd have to read about it on Wikipedia like I have to, just to kind of figure out what it is. But for all intents and purposes, since it says Live Evil, uh, we're going to call this a live album. And really great iconic album cover on this one miles davis live evil uh, frank zappa we uh, weasels rip my, fr my my fresh this might be my screen cap because people see the frank zappa and it'll make them click um i've talked about this and i'll talk about it again really quickly frank zappa and with one of the grateful dead they are bands that my friends love, and I don't. But over the last year and a half or so, I've been dipping my toes in the water, as it were. Um, and as far as The Grateful Dead goes, I've enjoyed, there's maybe a 50-50 ratio of what I've enjoyed and kind of, eh. Frank Zappa is still something I'm, I, I probably have about seven Frank Zappa albums. And, I'm, and, and just so I'm not gleefully ignorant of their music, I always want to have an opinion on, on, on music, on a band or an artist. Uh, Frank Zappa, I, I need to really play a lot of catch up on, to be honest. Uh, some of the albums, eh, some of the albums, not so bad. And I, I, I will be honest, I have not heard this one yet, but I will this weekend, for, it's a long weekend here in Canada or a bank holiday weekend, as you all say in the UK. 
But uh, I might have a chance to listen to this this week, an original reprise records pressing of Weasel's Rip My Flesh. I think I, I'm not sure if I showed this album last video, and I apologize if I did, and I'm waving my hands for no reason again. But uh, it's in the pile of stuff to show you, so uh, it's so good I'll show it to you again. Elvis Costello Spike. This has the song Veronica on it, and for that song alone it's worth picking up. Love the album cover too. Uh, one of my... Once you get out of the uh, out of the seventies into the eighties, Elvis Costello's material. This is this is eighty nine. This is probably one of his one of his better ones because um, his his catalog does get quite convoluted. Let's say from like eighty five till now, you don't know what you're getting, which is part of the good good thing about Elvis Costello, I guess. But this one's one of the better ones. Spike. Millie Jackson, Philly Bitchy, really really. You, some of you might know Millie Jackson. Some of you might are more familiar with her album covers because they got a little bit racy in the 70s. But Feeling Bitchy, Millie Jackson, really great funk, soul, R&B singer. Uh, when, I, when I see these albums at thrift stores, it makes me very happy because you don't see them very often, at least in my parts. And um, they're usually quality albums. But Millie Jackson, Feeling Bitchy. <clears throat> Saxon, Saxon. See, you're getting, you're going to, this is going to be one take today. Number 200 is going to be, like the other 200, they're going to be one takes. Um, really weird find. This is an original uh, pressing from France of Saxon's Denim and Leather. I think this is their finest album. Uh, went to this thrift store and there's, like you all tell me, and like I find all the time, nine out of ten times, it's all Nana Muscuri and, you know, shit like that horrible shit and then right in the middle of all this terrible stuff was a copy of Saxon denim and leather and, and, an, and an import copy from France that's weird uh, the church I see this one at thrift stores all the time uh, I wish I would find some of their al other albums on vinyl but I decided to finally pick this one up uh, I think it's just called the church actually I haven't heard this in years and years and years but it must have sold a ton of copies in Canada because I see this all the time but the church, April Wine, the nature, or the, the nature of the beast. Uh, I know for Canadians watching this, this will be kind of bog standard stuff. But if you're into April Wine, actually made quite a name for themselves outside of Canada. They were quite big in England and uh, certain parts of the states. Uh, as far as Canadian or as far as classic rock goes, classic rock. You can't, I don't know if you can get any better than April Wine coming out of Canada. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many songs you'll know by them uh, once you start listening to them. And I think this is uh, this is maybe their greatest album, The Nature of the Beast. It has songs like uh, I Want to Rock, um, Sign of a Gypsy Queen. You, these are songs you hear on Canadian radio five, six times a day, still to this day. Um, I think their best album, Nature of the Beast by April Wine. Split Ends, Frenzy. You guys, you guys all know I'm a Split Ends fanatic. This one has I See Red on it, which Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam uh, covered later on. And then here's the funny, another story. I'm going to tell you another story for those who are still hanging on. I met Eddie Vedder. I booked Mud Honey at, uh, at a club. I was booked the same club. And uh, Pearl Jam are, were in town. Mud Honey was in town opening for Pearl Jam. And, but uh, to make some extra scratch, Mud Honey were doing a, an off show at this club. And then it was secret that Eddie Vedder was going to come on stage and, and, and join them for, I think they did kick out the jams. Um, so I had to go back to this back alley and meet him and usher him in with his bodyguard and, and he was quite high, which was fine. But, uh, and I asked him about his cover of Icy Red, which you can see anywhere on YouTube or listen to it. He had no recollection of it. None. So yeah, that was kind of anticlimactic. Uh, Ron Carter, uh, this is kind of a mid-70s jazz album by him, uh, Ron Carter. Uh, a song for you. I just picked it up because uh, when I pick up... Yeah, I've been talking about this for a long time now. I've been getting more and more into jazz. And whenever I see jazz albums at thrift stores that I recognize the artist, I kind of pick them up, and that's one of them. Ron Carter. Kick Korea. Uh, uh, this is what song for... Lep this is a Leprechaun story on Polydor. Mid-70s. 1975, uh, 
if you have an open mind, uh, you see Chick Corea albums, mid, those mid-70s albums, pick them up at Thrift Stores. They're always, always going to be a great listen. And, you know, we're going to end on this one. Oh, man, this is, yeah, that story drove this over 30 minutes. Sorry. Um, this is a uh, acoustic research demonstration record. What this is, a lot of people collect these albums. Um, but this is the first one I've ever found on a thrift store. This is kind of a, this is released by Acoustic Research, which was a stereo company. I mean, they might still be. But this was an album ostensibly to test your stereo system. So there's full songs or clips of, they're all classical. And it tells you on the back here, if you're hearing this, your stereo is tuned correctly. If not, you might want to make this adjustment and this, and this adjustment. And what's great about this is if you're hearing it, it tells you if you if you're hearing it wrong what you're hearing it's a, it's hard to explain but it says if your bass is sounding like this you need to tweak this or if your treble sounding a little bit too much like this I found it really helpful actually uh, and I, I'm not done listening to this and tweaking I mean it's the endless it's the endless battle tweaking your stereo but I have no other hobbies so yeah I got my family and I got music so cheers y'all that's been number 200. I feel like I've given you a substandard video today, but uh, this is the only time. <laughs> Not substandard in, in, in what I've been showing you. It's just, I'm sorry, I apologize. Very tired today. It was a very, very long shift at work, and it just drags when you know you're going into a long weekend. It's just the clock never hits 8 o'clock in the morning. My fictional watch. So uh, once again, I want to say thank you to everyone uh, I really do appreciate it. Where this channel goes from here, don't know. Uh, at some point, I think this channel has an expiration date. Uh, I don't have any other interest in life, so I can't morph my channel into vinyl and something else, or, you know, so what, like a lot of people do, uh, to varying degrees of, of success. It's, uh, I, I, I have no other interest. I got my family, number one, and for, first and foremost, and I got vinyl. Or not just vinyl, music in general. Any kind of music, any format, any any kind of delivery system to get it to my ears, that's what I'm interested in. So yeah, but at some point I'm gonna to have to knock this channel on the head just to, how far can you go with showing you vinyl finds, I guess. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, you've made the first 200 uh, incredibly uh, enjoyable. And I wanna thank everyone once again. So Naznomad, I, I can't pronounce my name, I'm so tired. David Michael, AKA Naznomad, follow me on Instagram, N-A-Z-Z -Z underscore nomad. That's my professional pitch. Take care, everyone.